So let's first look at the circuit known as Frog's CW. Uh, this is advertised on websites as being a 3 watt transmitter but it's actually closer to 1.2 or 1.5 watts and I'll come to that in a little bit. The instructions, and I use the term loosely, are written in Chinglish. Uh, they need to be fleshed out. For instance, there's several versions of this and you really need to cross-reference the schematics with the bag of parts to make sure that you've got the version that you think you have because that took me quite a while to work out. Uh, for instance, there was a few parts missing. There was a one microfarad capacitor missing and there was another ceramic capacitor missing which is used to generate the side tone. The side tone is what you hear when you press down on the Morse code key through your earphones. They don't generate the actual tone that gets transmitted but other than that, if you're an electronics genius, you've probably already got some of these parts on hand. Other than that, everything else is mostly straightforward. I have read of some people having problems doing the windings on the ferrite coils, but that's pretty self-explanatory in the in the Chinglish instructions. Uh, you can cross-check that with a website. I forget what it's called, but you know, just Google toroids and you can uh, look out the value that they should be, and that'll come right up. And it's actually not really as complex as it looks. Uh, you might see some integrated circuits around. Uh, this one here is just a basic logic circuit, uh, logic IC, that just generates the side tone of all things, and it's the biggest thing on the on the circuit board. Uh, this is the infamous LM386 amplifier. Again, that does audio. And this little fellow here is actually a mixer chip, and it was used a lot in... Uh, VCRs in the mid 90s uh, so what they're doing is they're using one crystal for transmission which is get gets mixed in with this chip and the other one for receiving is also used for uh, filtering and mixing in this chip also and just while we're talking about crystals these are 7023 kilohertz or 7.023 megahertz crystals uh, other folks that know more about what they're doing can solder in sockets to have these removable because you know you can't tune this to a different frequency to transmit on. Uh, I'm happy with 7023 because this is by and large just for um, experimental purposes, shall we say. So I'm happy to leave them at that value. Moving on, let's talk about power. Now the frog circuit requires, well they suggest 12 volts DC regulated and what I've chose to use for that is three 3 3.7 volt uh, lithium-ion cells and when they're fully charged they give a voltage of around 12.4 to 12.5 and they last a fair while around 12 volts and they are connect connected to a little 3 to 4 cell charging circuit which is blue tacked in here and that takes uh, the 100 milliwatts off the solar cells and charges them directly uh, now where are we the solar cells themselves Oh, let me zoom out here a little bit. So they only put out about uh, what was it, 1.5 watts, which isn't very much. So to charge those batteries to full would take about 10 hours of sunlight. Uh, it wasn't my intention to have this thing solely just powered by solar power. Uh, what I wanted to do is just have the solar panels offset the power use by the frog circuit. And just for safety's sake, there's a little 5 amp fuse hiding in here as well. Uh, that's in conjunction with the protection that this little circuit boards provide. Hello! And just for the heck of it, I tacked on a USB uh, power adapter that we'd normally plug into a car because it's 12 volts and you can plug in your phone or whatever. So, yeah, I thought that was just a nice little touch for now. So, ultimately, what I would like to, make, like to make is some kind of beacon transmitter. Uh, for the time being, all I have hooked up to the key input on the circuit is this little uh, cyclic clicker. So all it's doing, and you can tune these little trim pots, uh, make it go a little bit faster. So, <laughs> when I'm testing it out, uh, I have this going, and it's it just transmits a little beep, 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 like that, a little bit like Sputnik. Uh, 
Now, as far as sending an actual message goes, uh, someone suggested using Arduino. Uh, so that would involve actual programming and whatnot. I don't know if I'm at that kind of level of intelligence at the moment, but these little kind of relay circuits are getting closer to that sort of goal, I guess you could say. And because the Morse code key, my ghetto Morse code key, is wired in parallel with that little relay circuit, you can still use it as an ordinary Morse code transmitter.